Learn Imperial to Rome Military in 5 minutes. So first things first, I'm going to briefly mention manpower. Manpower is self-explanatory. In a nutshell, the higher the manpower, the better. Your manpower pool is determined by your population, and it recovers every month. Freemen, citizens, and tribesmen all tr contribute to the manpower pool. However, freemen contribute the most, so keep that in consideration. Next, we want to take a look at levies and legions. Levies are always going to be the majority of your armies. The main distinction between levies and legions is that legions are a professional standing army and the levies are essentially civilian conscripts. Now, imagine levies being the average civilian that gets drafted during seasons of war. They have limited training and are unable to decide what kind of troop types they are. So for example, if your levies are a bunch of light infantry and archers, that's all you're going to get. Legions, on the other hand, are career soldiers that dedicate their day job to training. You get to decide which cohort types you want to specialize in, therefore making legions much stronger at countering enemy armies. Now, the amount of levies you get depends on your population. Therefore, having a large population will mean having lots of levies. As you can see here, my local population of citizen and freemen contribute to a total of 94 people to my manpower pool. So you want to aim for a lot of freemen if you want a large army. Now let's talk about legions. When creating legions, it'll be beneficial if you understand what types of cohorts you need. So let's take a look. We can see here that each unit type has their strengths and weaknesses. For example, Heavy infantry deals bonus damage against chariots and heavy cavalry, meanwhile dealing reduced damage against horse archers. By understanding each unit type, we can essentially build our legion in a way that specifically counters our enemies. As a rule of thumb, unit types kind of operate in a rock paper scissor mechanic. Archers fight favorably against heavy infantry, heavy infantry fight well against cavalry, and cavalry deals a significant amount of damage to archers. So to apply this, if we're going to war against Rome, we can see that Roman levies consist of 85% infantry. If we have lots of archers, it will give us an edge against their heavy infantry. This doesn't guarantee victory, however, this does give us a good foundation. There are a dozen different ways you can pair and match unit types to fit your strategy. For example, an army consisting of many light infantry is cheap, has good morale, and eats up less supplies when on the move. An army of horse archers moves quickly across the map and will crush heavy infantry, but they won't be able to conduct sieges. So to sum it all up, if you want a decisive war strategy, you should aim to have a good balance. Let's quickly mention automatic orders. There's quite a few, but the main two I'm focused on are the independent orders and the defend borders. This mechanic is a lifesaver. This is the one mechanic I wish other Paradox games had. Let me explain. Imagine having a huge empire with 50 to 60,000 levies, all split into 12 or 13 armies, and on top of that having a few thousand legions, Imagine having to contend across the entire European continent with 30 to 40 fortifications to fight over. This AI automation will save you so much headache. When activated on an army, the game AI puts that army on autopilot, which means they will act accordingly to what the AI sees as important, such as taking cities, defending your own cities, and besieging forts. Now this is great! because it's near impossible to micro 20 separate armies across Europe. Putting them on autopilot will cut your workload in half. All you need to do is focus on one or two primary armies and let the AI control the rest of your supporting armies. Finally, to wrap things up, let's briefly talk about sieges. Sieges occur when an enemy attempts to overcome a territory that contains a fortification. In a simple explanation, each level of walls will require more manpower to overtake. Once we take a fortification, then all surrounding countryside will automatically flip to our side. This makes it very crucial to hold forts at strategic locations, such as river crossings or mountain passes. 
This also means that when you're going to war, it's worth your consideration to bum rush these key locations first, perhaps bum rushing the enemy capital. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Imperial to Rome Military in 5 minutes, and I hope to see you guys next time.